all right dear students the topics for today's class is about partitions and mounting and secondly we will be discussing about virtual file system right uh, in the previous uh, video i have discussed about file system implementation so the structures were discussed on disk structures and in memory structures and the focus of today's video will be regarding the concept of partition and mounting mounting i have also discussed in my previous video lecture about file system mounting so partitions and mounting what it is uh, generally what happens uh, is that a disk can be sliced or it can be distributed into multiple partitions right everybody does the uh, same thing right that you partition your disk into multiple partitions so that organizing the files into multiple partitions will be easy instead of just having one disk and storing all the files in that partition will make the things cumbersome so what easy is that you divide your disk into multiple partitions like c d e commonly if we talk about then it will be easier for you to manage your files okay so that is one way which can be done a disk can be sliced into multiple partitions or volume can span multiple partitions on multiple disk so that type of organization that if you are dividing the disk into multiple partition and you are also having multiple disk that type of organization is rared organization redundant array of independent disk i have a video uploaded on rared organization also so you can go through the video in my playlist regarding red in disk storage and scheduling playlist so either you can partition the disk and you can make the slices so that the file system storage becomes convenient and easy to access or what can be done is if you want to achieve reliability and performance then you can have multiple disk and you can partition the disk and distribute the data into those multiple disk right so that can be done so partitions can be either raw that means they are not containing any file system no file system is there so unix operating system has some concept like this that the partitions are raw because it has its own format right so it does not use a file system thing whereas you have cook partition system in windows that means the partitions are already populated with some file system right there will be certain fcvs files is control blocks which is stores the information about the file attributes like file permissions file types date of creation file size file location etc we have discussed it about fcb in the previous video so there is a raw partitions and there are cooked partitions raw partitions are the one which do not have any file systems attached to them like in unix because they have its own format all right on the disk it is it is having its own format so it will not be using any file system concept on it whereas the cook partition refers to the partitions which are being found in the windows system so the windows operating system is the one which has a cook partition because it contains the file systems already populated over there with fcbs and initial directory structures is appropriate we have also seen about the boot block concept that is boot partition block in the on disk structures in file system implementation which is responsible for storing the program which boots the operating system so the boot blocks is accessed as part of raw partition because this is a first partition by the boot program prior to any operating system being loaded so sabse pehle jo program boot block mein hota hai wo run karta hai tab tak operating system bhi load nahi hua the kyunki hum operating system ko load karne ke liye we boot block ko run kara rahe hain okay so the boot block is accessed as part of a raw partition by the boot program prior to any operating system being loaded modern boot programs understand multiple os and file system formats and can give the user a choice of which of several available systems to boot and this is talking about multiple operating systems being present on the same machine like dual booting you can have a linux installed and uh, windows installed in the same machine so the boot block program should be able to understand which operating system has to be loaded right then there comes the root partition root partition refers to the partition which stores the kernel that means the heart of your operating system and it may also contain some other system files which are mounted 
which are attached to the root partition at the boot time. Continuing with the boot process, additional file system can also get mounted. Okay, in case the fu in future the user wants to use certain files or access certain files, then he will need to get that file system mounted onto the root partition or to the appropriate mount point. So that additional information will have to be present over there. Okay, and the mount table structure which is being maintained in in-memory structure because the root partition is containing the operating system kernel part. That means it is talking about the main memory structure. This thing is lying on the secondary storage structure. So as part of mounting process, the file systems may be checked for errors or consistencies either because they are flagged as not having been closed properly the last time they were used or just for general principles. The file systems may be mounted either automatically or manually. So when you mount file systems, once you are done accessing the files on the mounted file system, then you will need to close the files. All right. And that mounted file system will be unmounted. So there may be possibility that the file system is not being unmounted properly and there are errors or inconsistencies in the file system. Okay. Because they are not being closed properly or handled properly. So these type of things will be coming to uh, information in the mountable structure. So you will be checking the file systems as part of mounting process that there are errors or inconsistencies or not using the mountable structure, right? So this was something about the partitions and mounting. Next, we will be discussing about virtual file system. So virtual file system, what is virtual file system? It's like an interface. It provides an means or an interactive medium so that the user sitting on this end is able to interact with the different type of file systems all right so jo different different types of file systems available here the user should be able to access those file systems and that is being done by virtual file system interface all right so virtual file system it provides a common interface to multiple different file system types in addition, it provides for a unique identifier that is vNode for file across entire space, including across all file systems of different types. All right. So it, the diagram also shows there is a file system interface. Okay. The user wants to access any file and that file they is present either on this disk or on this disk or it is present on a remote system through a network access is possible. So there may be different types of file systems. This is a local file system type 1. This is a local file system of type 2. This is remote file system of type 1. So user should be able to access the files from any of the file system types. Right. So how to get the proper common interface so that it becomes easier for the user to access the files stored on different different type of file systems. That job is being done by virtual file system interface. Right. So according to this diagram, the first layer is a file system interface. And that is actually based on the system calls like open, read, write and close calls and on file descriptors, which gives a description of the file. The second layer is the VFS layer. This is the one which serves two important functions. It separates the file system generic operations from their implementation by defining a clean VFS interface. So it gives a clean interface. User will not go into the very deep of how to access the file system. But the user will just give an open command and he will be able to open the files from any of the type of file system. And there is one unique identifier, vNode. Several implementations for VFS interface may coexist on the same machine, allowing transparent access to different type of file systems mounted locally. It provides a mechanism for uniquely representing a file throughout the network. And that is also a, a function which is being uh, performed by this VFS interface that it is providing a unique representation. That is we are talking about vNode over here. Right. So that your file can be identified in a unique way among all the different type of file systems. And that is provided by VFS interface. What we know is that it contains a numerical designator for a network wide unique file. 
this network wide uniqueness is required for support of network file systems so when we talk about network file systems that means the files which can be uh, used in client server model that means if you want to access a file which is stored on a machine remotely then you will be needing a virtual file interface that will help you out to download that file and that uses the concept of virtual file interface again all right so this was about your partitions and mounting followed by a virtual file system next we will be discussing about the directory implementation thank you